this is when we talk about hypotheses. A hypothesis is a statement that suggests what you're expecting or the direction you're expecting your study to go. So if you have a null hypothesis, I w it would state that there is no difference between the groups. So a null hypothesis might state um, feeding Mars bars, feeding six Mars bars a day to doctoral students does not render them any more intelligent than not feeding Mars bars to doctoral students. So I'm not expecting to see any difference be sick, but apart from that, no. The, an alternate hypothesis states there are differences between groups. And it's almost like a get out of jail free, because if I suggest with my null hypothesis that there isn't a difference, um, I can then say, ah, but although my null hypothesis was not supported, my alternative hypothesis was. So it's really just about the difference between groups. This is important when you're talking about um, type 1 and type 2 errors. So you, you have to be very careful that you don't construct a question or a study or an experiment that sort of presupposes um, the answer. The skill of the researcher is more about creating something that appears neutral so that your findings are, wow, look at this, this, this jumped out at us because we weren't expecting this. Um, so you would usually go for a null hypothesis, no difference, as a choice because it's very easy to criticise um, if people report what they were looking for. Um, and we had this a few years ago where the, where the team was in France who said they, they'd um, cracked cold fusion um, and unlimited f um, fuel and pollution-free fuel, and they've never been able to replicate it. So they must have, they, they thought they saw it, they were looking really hard for it, it's never been replicated. Um, and science replicates itself to, to attempt to falsify previous findings, that's how science moves forward. Um, but that's also how research can work as well, you know, you don't ever go in specifically looking for it's quite an important mindset to think about, you know, as I go in to answer this question, what is it I, I, I want to know, you know, or what is it I'm, I'm looking for? Um, and again, it can depend on, on what um, method you're using. So really the most open method that I'm aware of is grounded theory, but that's quite a complex is it, on one hand, it's very easy because they just go, everything's data. You don't go in with a question, you don't do a lit review, you just go in and find out what's going on and everything is data. And that's brilliant. But then what you struggle with is, what do I do with all this? And that focuses more on behaviours. So you're not actually looking for attitudes and you're not looking for specific people. Um, but that's a very broad and open uh, methodology. Whereas you have things like questionnaires and by definition you design a questionnaire to answer specific questions. So, um, and it's all part of the, I mean, you possibly would want to discuss that in your thesis. Certainly would expect to discuss it at Biver. So, um, where were we? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So if people make a type 1 error, they're assuming that, there is a, that um, there's a difference when there wasn't one. And if they make a type 2 error, they're concluding there is no difference when there was one. I would suspect, although I have no real data or evidence about that, type 1 errors are more prevalent than type 2 because people look for things. It's also part of the difficulty with this is when you actually start to get your data in, it's very exciting. And the temptation to start analysing is huge. Um, and it was Sherlock Holmes who said you must never, you must never theorise ahead of your data because it, it, it just confuses you. Um, and I was doing some research once. I was swabbing nurses' shoes to find out what microorganisms they carried on the feet. I must have been mad. All over the summer, the smell was hideous. Um, and when we started getting the results back, um, there was one person, um, everybody, all, all, the, all the microorganism levels on shoes fell over the course of a shift, except on one nurse. 
and she had been the nurse that had been off the ward most that day because it was theatre day so she'd been to and from theatre and the microorganism levels on her shoes went right through the roof and I got so excited about this I think great we can change how we how we work you know we can have just one nurse leaving the ward and we keep her away from the patients so she's not going to infect them with all this gunk she's got on her shoes never happened again it was just a blip um, and if I'd have actually waited and analysed my data as a complete data set I wouldn't have wasted all my time writing my Nobel Prize exception speech and things like that because sometimes exciting things happen but they only happen once and that's the nature of research too